Yeah, Juice. You know, it was, it was good. K-Dub gave it to Trey Shackelford. He's had a heck of a, really had a heck of a day today, but he's been building it up really as we've gone throughout camp. He brings us a physical presence out there. He's one of those guys that probably plays above his athletic ability, and that's what we need on the edge. He's bringing some toughness to our football team, and that's big. Uh, Eddie gave it to Capenna. I mean, one of the best interceptions I've probably ever seen in a long time. Uh, One-handed deal there in the compete period. And then Coach T-Bone gave it to Falili. Uh, Falili's really found his voice within our football team. I'm really proud of him. Even when he's not out there, he's leading, he's talking, he's coaching. Uh, just really proud of that kid and what he's bringing to the team. T-Bone has a David Terrebonne, right? Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, you mentioned Trey a little bit, and uh, again, mostly mixing in kind of with the twos right now, but we saw a couple of those catches he made, especially on the deep ball. Where do you kind of see him maybe fitting into the offense? Uh, time will tell. Time will tell. But we need some big body outside guys. You know, it's good to see Maxwell back out there, but he has brought a toughness to that group. And when you put it on tape, that stuff's infectious because you can say, hey, look at Trey doing it. We all have to do it, right? Uh, Ganassi Murthy is now back. So it's going to be a hell of a competition at that outside receiver position. And we feel like we have some depth on paper. Now we just got to go show it. Goose a little nicked up today? Yeah, uh, Goose is just out. Uh, hopefully he'll be back on Thursday and, you know, we'll, we'll be good to go. Uh, I'm curious about uh, Chris Hudson as well. What have you seen, or what have, bleh, bleh, what have you seen from him? From well, Chris so is in a tremendous learning mode. You know, we got him kind of playing inside, outside. We're putting a lot on his plate. Uh, you know, he's got tremendous upside, you know, so we just got to get him used to the way we do things and that effort, that energy that it takes every single day to go out there and do it. But I'm proud of the building blocks and what he's done. And uh, we'll kind of see come Saturday if he can make some plays with the balls in it, ball in his hands. Yeah. For receivers in this offense, like what makes that transition a little challenging? Kind of what do they have to do to kind of, you know, adjust to you guys' offense? You know, I just think, you know, whether it's Tony Freeman, Shackelford, Hudson, you know, it just takes some time. I, I'll show a bright example like K-Dub finally knows I think who he is and how to practice you know it takes some time it, it just really does and it's a culture to take hold and it's an understanding mentally what you got to bring every day so I'm not really concerned with what other programs do but we're going to test you right so game days are easy and it just takes a little bit to get used to that. Was that Kenny we saw uh, not dressed for today's practice? Yeah, Kenny was out, just a little hip deal, you know, a couple little minor things here and there, and you got to be available. And, uh, you know, we practice every other day, so it's a, it's a fight to make sure those guys are ready to go. Coach, I know you're with these guys year round, but is there anything that uh, kind of comes to the forefront in terms of leadership qualities when you get out on the field that you can't see in the gym or in the meeting room, stuff like that? Well, I think that's when it has to show. You know, I think when you're in the locker room or you're in the building or you're in winter conditioning, things are pretty easy. Now, what leadership shows up when something's hard, when you yourself drop a ball, what's your energy going to be like? You know, I just watched John. He threw the pick. What was his response? He was good. He was upbeat. He was getting the guys together. He was hustling off. It's all about responding to adversity. That's what real leaders do. And sometimes it's about having those hard conversations. When you see someone else not living the standard, whether that's your buddy or not, you got to go up to them and raise the level of their play. So those are the things that we want to see. I'm still seeing the leadership of this team forming and uh, excited about kind of working with those guys to get it right. Kind of a broad question here, but just how do you feel about your offensive line group coming into this spring? You know, some returners and some new faces mixing in. Well, we feel great about the personnel. Right now, technique-wise, we're a little murky, right? So obviously with Coach Caster, there's going to be some new things that we need to do, and I think some changes that I think are – going to be really positive, especially in the run game. Had our first inside run period today. It was physical. It was aggressive. But right now you can see guys hesitating and thinking through a little bit of technique. So it's still a work in progress. I told the staff yesterday, you know, practice 10 through 12. That's when that old line has got to really start churning. So ask me again here in a couple of weeks. What do you hope to see this week leading into that, that scrimmage on Saturday? So, you know, I choose to do a scrimmage practice six because I want to see us do our base stuff. I want to see guys that can execute fundamentals, techniques, easy communications. We're not trying to beat each other. Uh, so it's kind of like a fundamental scrimmage to me. So who can make some of those fundamental plays? Who can make those blocks? Who can get some people down? You know, it's real easy. I know I got a defensive background, but you say you make those tackles sometimes on a third down drill. Now you got to go out in a live situation and do it. So can we control how we perform and not beat ourselves? Those are just the little things you're looking for early in spring. You mentioned the leadership is still kind of forming, but who have you seen at least vocally out there defensively, especially with, you know, replacing Brennan and RJ and guys who were like that last year? And you know, 
think those are big shoes to fill. You know, I think they really are. I think Kyle Thornton has taken over the majority of that. You know, a guy you're going to speak here to Quinn Roth, he's got a ton of experience that I think guys lean on. And then in the back end, you know, you can see there was a lull today. You know, our back end needs to take steps forward over and over and over. So we're going to continue to throw them in the fire. They're going to continue to get beat, and I'm going to see who's going to rise to that occasion. Um, you know, like Jackson and Moku had classes today, so they missed kind of the end of practice, and you could see missing that type of experience out there. But that's the biggest group that we got to continue uh, to put together. Jay, can you talk about, you know, you have a lot of new coaches on your staff this year, coaching the coaches so they can coach the players. Can you talk about that? Well, I think it's my number one job. You know, I tell the, the 10 assistants, that's my position group. You know, I, I sit in a lot of meetings. I give them a lot of feedback. Uh, we thoroughly go through practice, so there is no hesitation. You know, so you got to create clarity for those guys, just as you would as a player. And I know we've had plenty of change on staff. I always look at it as an opportunity, right? So when someone leaves, I have an opportunity to get better. And I think that's the way we got to look at it as a program. And I think hopefully we always look at change that way. It's an opportunity to grow. So they bring some ideas in from things they've done at past places. Uh, but I think our new coaches have done a good job, not just the full-time guys, but the support staff people too, kind of doing it our way. And I think that's very important. Not my way, our way. Spring football has always been important. Is it more important now with the landscape of college athletics with guys leaving before their eligibility and new guys coming in seemingly every year? Has it become more important? Yeah, I think it has. You know, I, I think you've always used to have some mid-year guys. Now you have as many, you know, I think we have 20, right? And football is a unique sport because you also get another 20 guys in the middle of training, right? In the summer, we get 20 freshmen show up. So. Uh, it's important to get these reps early on. Uh, you know, it isn't just about finding ones and twos, but finding who needs those exact reps to get better. And, and like I said, every day those guys keep learning how we do it. And I think that's just as important as anything else. So by the time you get to that summer training mode, they get it, then it's really solidified come fall. It's really hard to come perform at a high level if you're coming in the summer. It's, it's just really difficult. So a couple positions can do it, but you know, we're in a mode of building this football team and you got to do it right now.